All right, welcome back. Uh, so hopefully you finished up M5, uh, knocked out that other entry box, uh, that other button, made it print so many times. Uh, let's move on to M6. Uh, so M6 is a relatively short um, module. What I want to show in M6, so I've actually done to do one there. Um, what I wanted to show in M6 is uh, how you can add rows and columns. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make uh, this remote control GUI. Um, and you'll notice with this remote control GUI that there's kind of three columns. So there's column zero, column one, and column two. Uh, and then there's a bunch of rows, right? So there's row zero, which has labels on it. Row one, which has entry boxes. Row two, which is button. Row three row four, row five, and row six. So there's seven rows total, three columns total. Um, and we're just gonna show how to, how to set that, how to lay that out. It's a pretty straightforward concept, uh, but I wanted to show you that. I also wanted to sneak into this example showing you labels uh, and keyboard events, right? So if you run it right now, uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of code that is done, right? So all the, all the meat is in here. Um, it's just not laid out right. So left uh, is actually in the right spot entry box is in the right spot, but then right in 600, we want it to move to a different place, right? Uh, so let's see if we can if we can make that happen. Uh, so it says, uh, follow along to make the remote control GUI check. So what we've got here, so we've got the root window, uh, and then you'll notice that I say dot title on the root window, uh, and that says uh, MQTT remote. By the way, resizing works, but it kind of looks ugly. Um, and so setting the title on your windows is a good trick. So in general, just always set the title of your windows to something. I've got my one and only frame. Uh, it has a padding of 20. You can use multiple frames. It's just that I often don't, right? I just kind of often use, uh, use my one frame. That frame is on the root. Um, it doesn't need anything passed into the grid command because there's only one of them, right? It takes up all the space. But all these others, uh, so that one does not need a row and column, but all these others kind of could use a row and column. Uh, so let's start with the label. So here's an example of a label, by the way. It's just dot .label. Uh, it says to go on to the main frame, and the text is left. So labels are very simple. What I want to do with this guy is I want to say, hey, you're in row zero, column zero. Um, and I'm actually going to copy that to my clipboard because I'm going to do that to a lot of people, right? So every time I call grid, uh, I'm going to say where they're, where they're supposed to go. The entry box is going to go right below it, so it's going to be in row one, column zero. Uh, if you were to run it now, um, it doesn't really change much because they kind of, they defaulted to those spots. Uh, so let's move some of the others. Let's move uh, this right label. So the right label, uh, and I've got this on my clipboard, so I'm just pasting it in. Uh, it's going to go in row zero, so the top row, column two. And the entry box is going to go right below it, so row one of column two. Now let's run it and see something interesting that happens. Um, and that is uh, that it shows up beside, which is, which is great. Um, but you'll notice that there's not really a gap in between the two. And the reason there's not a gap is because column one has nothing in it. So it just kind of got smooshed, right? Um, so they're kind of right next to each other. That's because there's nothing in column one. Let's see if we can fix that. Uh, so next up is the forward button. Uh, the forward button, uh, it actually is going to be in column one, which is great. Uh, and it's going to be the next row down. So it's going to be in row, I'm up to row two, uh, column one. Uh, and if I run it now, it should kind of have the structure uh, that I want things to have. By the way, if I click the forward button, you can see it just prints the word forward button. Uh, so every time I click it, it prints forward button. And then the other thing that we've got here, which I think is cool, is we've done a root. So it's this whole window. So uh, it's kind of bound to this whole window. Uh, and we've got a binding to up. Uh, so if I hit the up arrow on my keyboard, it's going to say forwards up. So I go ahead and hit uh, up arrow and it says forward key. Um, and so now you can use buttons or you can use keyboard events. That's really cool, right? So that's why like when I was driving the, the robot around, I was just using my keyboard, which is fun. Um, so you can go ahead and go through the rest of these. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave some of them as an exercise for you. So the left button is going to be on row three. Uh, column zero. Uh, tell you what, there's a bunch of people on row three, so I'm just going to go and grab a few of these. Uh, so the stop is in the middle of row three, uh, 
uh, and then the right is on the uh, column two of row three. Uh, and so now you can kind of see how my, my layout is, is coming together. Uh, back button is row four. Heck, I may well just finish it before you know it. Um, and I like to do a lot of testing. Uh, so I'm just kind of like moving it into place uh, and, then I'm, and then I'm testing it, right? Uh, up and down are actually in the correct places. So I just need to move exit and quit over. Uh, even though they are in the correct places, I usually do go ahead and specify uh, the row and the column whenever I'm doing uh, grid layout stuff. Um, and I just like to do that because then I just, I don't know, I feel sure that it's going to go to the right place. So if I run it again, um, those didn't change anything. They were still in five and six, uh, column zero, but I like to specify them anyway. Uh, and then the last two are just um, rows five and six of column two. So rows five and six uh, of column two. Cool. Um, and you'll notice that these are um, almost all bound to buttons. So like if I click up, it'll say up button. Uh, and then it's also bound to just the U key. So if I hit the U key on my keyboard, it says um, up. So it says key up. Uh, and then J, by the way, is bound to down. So if I hit J on my keyboard, it'll print uh, down key. Uh, cool. The only one that's not labeled to a print button, by the way, is exit. Um, and exit actually calls exit. Uh, so it just closes... Um, closes the program. So that's a way you can programmatically uh, end something. Uh, cool. So that's kind of your, your crash course on MQTT. Uh, I think that this example uh, shows a really good just kind of like preview of some of the things you'll do. So buttons, labels, uh, entry boxes, um, frames, windows, um, getting values from entry boxes. Uh, this line of code right here, by the way, this was something new. This was starting the entry box with an initial value. We hadn't done that before. The syntax on it is kind of weird. Uh, so you have to say index uh, insert at location zero, the value 600. Um, it's kind of a weird syntax, but it's not hard. Um, but this GUI, by the way, doesn't do much of anything uh, because all the lambdas just call prints. In a real application, these would all call functions, right? And so it'd be kind of a big program before you know it. All right, so that is uh, some skills about uh, about Tekinter. Uh, hopefully by following with those modules, uh, you won't be intimidated when you see Tekinter things uh, in the modules. What we're gonna focus on from here though is the, the MQTT side of things, like the actual message passing communication protocol. All right, we will see you next time for MT MQTT. See you then, bye. Mm -hmm.